In the world of NSX, if we want to implement features such as a distributed firewall or distributed routing, all that's possible simply by using host transport nodes. Effectively, that's a ESXi host, which has been enabled for NSX. However, if we want to use some additional services, such as connectivity to the external world, or for our gateways, we want some fault tolerance with high availability, either active-active or active standby, to use some of those additional services is going to involve the implementation of something called a services router. And to implement the services regarding a services router, we are going to be using another object as part of our NSX topology. And that additional object is an additional type of transport node. So currently we have an ESXi host acting as a host transport node. And what we're going to add to the mix is an additional VM or two. They're going to be acting as edge transport nodes, which are going to be used to provide those additional services. And some examples of those additional services would be things like high availability for our gateways and connectivity to external networks so that VMs inside of our NSX networked environment can have access and reachability out to external servers and external nodes. And before we can actually use some of those additional services, we need to have the edge nodes deployed. So in this video, I'd like to walk you through the deployment of edge nodes. And then once those edge transport nodes are deployed, we can then at that point take further steps in starting to use some of those additional services provided by those edge transport nodes. So for our game plan for these VMs that are going to be acting as the edge transport nodes, let's go ahead and deploy two of them. And we'll call them edge one and edge two. It's also going to ask us for a fully qualified domain name. So let's go ahead and use ogat.nested. And then for edge two, it'll be edge2.ogat.nested. Now, up to this point in this set of videos, and I'm going to continue with it right now, is we're going to avoid having to set up our own DNS internally inside of our nested lab environment, because that's just one additional step that, if it goes wrong, can cause the whole enterprise to not work. So we'll go ahead and specify these fully qualified domain names, but I'm not going to take the additional step yet of setting up those DNS records, because if we did set up the DNS, we'd have to train everybody, including the NSX manager and so forth, to pay attention and start using a different DNS server. So just as a heads up, these are going to be the names of the two edge nodes, the two VMs we're going to deploy. And then on the management network down here, which is my 192.168.1 network, let's go ahead and use the IP addresses of dot .36 for edge 1 and dot .37 for edge 2. And so the NSX manager is going to be interacting and communicating with those edge nodes. And again, just to be clear, these are going to be edge transport nodes. Those are the VMs. And again, the differentiation here between an edge transport node and a host transport node is a host transport node is an ESXi host where we've enabled it to support NSX. And then the edge transport nodes are implemented as completely separate VMs. And as a general rule, I want to avoid placing an edge transport node VM on a host transport node. Even though it could support that edge node, I want to go ahead and simply separate them out. So in doing that, let's place these two edge nodes on ESXIC. So that'll be the compute resource. And that'll also help reinforce the idea that these edge nodes as VMs do not, and very likely shouldn't, run on the same ESXi host that are acting as host transport nodes. So let me go ahead and draw a little visual representation of ESXIC. So we're going to deploy the actual edge node VMs right here from the NSX manager. We'll specify that ESXIC should be the computing resource. It's also going to ask us about the management IP addresses we want associated with them. So we use .36 and .37 on the 192.168.1 network. We're also going to need to specify an uplink profile that's going to specify on the host that they're currently running on, which uplinks should they use. So I want to go ahead and use, just for the lab, let's use VMNIC3. So as part of that, we'll need to make a port group on the distributed switch that is using VMNIC3. And that way, when we link it all together in the uplink profile for the edge nodes, we can say, use this port group, and that port group will lead to VMNIC3. And also, we'll need to specify which VLAN to use. So in the lab environment here, because we're already using VLAN 11 for the tunnel endpoints for the two ESXi hosts that are acting as host transport nodes, let's also use that same VLAN. And that way we don't have to worry about routing for the transport network as traffic is being tunneled between, for example, ESXi A going to one of our edge nodes or for traffic going from one of our edge nodes over to one of our host transport nodes. So we'll use VLAN 11 and VMNIC3. And for IP addresses for the tunnel endpoints that these edge transport nodes are gonna be using, 
Uh, let's just go ahead and use the same pool of addresses that we're currently using for the host transport nodes. And so that's going to be something in the 10.11.11 network. And I think the range there we set up was 151 through 200. So when we deploy the edge nodes, we'll simply specify the same pool. We'll specify the same VLAN. And even though they don't have to be in the same VLAN as each other, in the nested lab environment, that'll help avoid the need for routing between different subnets here on the transport network. So with that in mind, let's go over to the NSX manager and let's begin the deployment of these two edge nodes in our NSX nested lab environment. All right, so we're gonna deploy these from the NSX manager. So we'll log in to the NSX manager by clicking here on login after supplying the password for admin. And to deploy the edge nodes, what we're gonna do is click right here on system, on the system tab up on top. And with system selected, here we have the system overview. So we have one NSX management node, that's our NSX manager that we're currently using. And we have two ESXi hosts that we've enabled with NSX, which makes them host transport nodes. And if you'll notice also, we have absolutely zero at the moment edge transport nodes, but we're about to change that. So to add or deploy edge transport nodes here on the system tab on the left, we'll go over to fabric and expand that if it's not already. And then we'll go down to nodes. Also VMware from time to time may move where things are as versions of NSX continues to go forward. However, the concepts are the same. So we're going to go here to the nodes in this version of the NSX manager. And with nodes selected, we're going to click right here on add edge node. So let's go ahead and call this edge1.ogit.nested. And then we'll also use that as the fully qualified domain name. So we'll paste it there. And then it's asking us for the form factor, which equates to how much CPU and RAM are we gonna throw at it. And also I wanna point out that by default, it wants to reserve 100% of whatever we allocate to it for RAM. So if you are in a nested environment with limited capacity, you may wanna crank that back to 25% or 50% or choose a smaller form factor. But on my current hardware, I've got 256 gigs of physical RAM on the ESXi host that we deployed early on in the series. And so I'm gonna go ahead and take the medium form factor and leave the default 100% reservation for this edge node that we're deploying. So we'll click on next to continue. So I'll go ahead and specify and confirm those passwords. I'm also gonna specify that I want to allow direct console access via SSH, logging in as admin, or as root. And that way, if we need to connect directly to these edge nodes as VMs and take a look, we can do that. So with that in place, we'll click on next. Now for the deployment of these VMs, we need to know where to put them. So we're gonna use the dropdown. And because the NSX manager already has a relationship with this vCenter, we'll go ahead and select it from the list. And that's why it's showing up here is because the one we previously associated with NSX manager. And then as far as the cluster, we wanna put this on ESXIC and that is in the cluster called non-NSX hosts. So let's pop over to the vSphere client just for a moment and confirm that. So back here at the nested vSphere environment, we'll click on login and we'll go to our host and clusters view. And here's our host transport nodes with A and B. And in the non-NSX hosts, there is our ESXIC right there. And we're gonna make that the home right here for our new edge node. So we'll go back to the NSX manager. And if you have a resource pool that you wanna associate with, you can do that as well, I don't. So we'll go ahead down to host. And from the host, we'll select the only host there and that is ESXiC. So we'll select it and then we'll specify where we want to store the files. And so we could choose either of the data stores that are located on ESXiC. So let's go ahead and choose the first one and we'll click on next. Now, regarding the management IP address for this edge node, we're gonna use IPv4. Based on our plan, we are gonna use the static IP address of 192.168.1.36, and that's on a 24-bit network. And then we'll go ahead and specify the default gateway, which is 192.168.1.1. And then we're gonna specify the port group on the existing distributed switch on ESXIC that we wanna use for the management interface on this edge node. So we'll click here on select interface, and I have a beautiful port group right here called nested management to 192. That's gonna be perfect. We'll click on save, and then we'll put in a public DNS server of 8.8.8.8, and then we'll put in a public NTP server, or at least the name that leads to an NTP server, and we'll use 0.northamerica.pool.ntp.org, and then we'll click on next to continue. So as we continue the deployment here, it's asking us for the edge switch name, and that's really an older thing that we don't need to configure. So when we hover here on the information icon, it's just letting us know that that's been deprecated. We don't need to specify any value here. But what we do need to specify is which transport zone or zones we want this edge node to support. So in our lab, we have two 
transport zones, one for overlay segments, one for VLAN back segments, and I want to make sure that this edge node can support and be part of both of those. And then for the uplink profile, if we click on the dropdown, I did not create an uplink profile that specifies VLAN 11 and VMNIC 3. So what we can do right here is we can simply create one on the fly. So instead of going over to profiles and then creating it, we'll just do it right here by clicking on create new uplink profile. And I'm gonna call this edge uplink VLAN 11, just to remind me what it is, and VMNIC 3. And then I'm gonna copy that name and I'm gonna bring it down here for the actual active uplinks. That'll be the label right here. Once again, that's just gonna help remind me when I use it, where we're mapping to. And then for the transport VLAN, we'll use VLAN 11. And again, you don't have to use the same exact VLANs and subnets for the tunnel endpoints. However, in the nested lab environment, by using VLAN 11 for everything, that's just gonna avoid having to implement routing on the transport network as your edge nodes and the host transport nodes communicate with each other over their tunnel interfaces. And then here, because we're gonna be using this uplink profile with an edge node, I'm gonna specify an artificially large MTU, such as 9,000. And that way we can support the Geneve tunnels and the overhead associated with them. And so 9,000 will be more than enough for our needs. And with that specified, we'll click on add. So now it took us back to the add edge node wizard and it selected that uplink profile that we just created. And now for IP addressing, we'll use IPv4. And I'm gonna go ahead and borrow the pool of addresses that we set up for our host. So I'll say use IP pool. And then unfortunately, I think I called that pool. Yeah, I call it pool for host tunnel endpoints, but we're gonna use that for not only our IP addressing for our hosts, but we'll also use that same pool for the tunnel endpoint addressing for edge nodes as well. So that's gonna be something in the 10.11.11 .11 address space. And next we're gonna specify the actual interface that we want the uplinks to use. So here in this uplink profile, we're specifying VLAN 11 and just the name has VMIC3. And then down here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna specify that we wanna use VMIC3. So we'll click on the select interface and I don't have a pork group <laughs> on the distributed switch that is specifically using VMNIC3. What we really need is a pork group that's doing trunking and is using VMNIC3. So I'm gonna pause right here and let's jump over to the vSphere client and let's create that pork group that we can then use in association with this edge node. So back at the vSphere client, let's go to the networking tab up here and with networking selected. And from here, we'll right click on our distributed switch We'll create a new distributed port group. And I'm gonna name this PG for Edges VMNIC3. And that way we'll know exactly what this is doing. So we'll click on next. And we want this to be set up as a trunk. So I'm gonna set up VLAN trunking. And then from the profile, it's gonna specify regarding that trunk, which VLAN to use, which is gonna be VLAN 11. So again, the port group is gonna support trunking. And then we're gonna scroll down. And I wanna take a look at all the other attributes as well. So we'll click on next. And I wanna allow for MAC address changes and forge transmit and enable Mac learning and click on next. I'm gonna leave traffic shaping untouched, click on next. And then for uplinks, I just wanna use uplink three. So I'm gonna take zero, one, and two and move them down. So the only available uplink is uplink VMIC three. So we'll click on next and next and next and finish. And then we'll check our work. So I'm gonna click on the actual distributed switch, click on configure and click on topology just to verify our work. And so here is our port group that we just set up and it is mapped over exclusively to VMNIC3 on each of our hosts. So now if we associate the edge node with this port group, it'll effectively be using VMNIC3 on ESXIC, which is the host supporting this edge node. So let's go back to the NSX manager. And from here, because we just created that port group that maps out to VMNIC3, we're gonna click on refresh right here and it should show up, there it is. And so we'll select it and click on save. So just as a reminder of what we just configured for the transport network, we specified this uplink profile, which specifies the VLAN, we specified IPv4 and use an IP address from the pool. And then for the actual uplink to use, it's gonna use the uplink associated with this port group right here, which is the one we just created. So we'll click on finish. And in the background, NSX manager is now in the process of deploying that VM over on the ESXi host. So we'll click on refresh here and away it goes. And if we go over to the vSphere client and look at recent tasks, we can actually see, let me go ahead and look at running tasks. We can see that there's an OVF template being deployed. And that OVF template is the NSX edge node VM that's being deployed by the NSX manager. All right, let me thin out some of these columns. I'll click on columns. 
Let me remove ID. It's being deployed as a virtual machine. That looks a little better. Let me go ahead and size out these columns a little bit to make it a little more readable. And that deployment could take anywhere between 30 and 45 minutes. So while this is deploying the initial edge node here, edge one, let's go ahead and deploy the second edge node, which will give us some fault tolerance. Effectively, we're gonna deploy a second VM and for that second VM, it'll have almost all the similar properties except for the management IP address will be .37 based on our plan. So we'll click on add edge node. We'll call it edge2.ogit.nested. We'll copy that and put that in as the FQDN as well. We'll use medium as well. We'll click on next. I'll supply the passwords and confirm them for admin and also for root. And I'll also specify we want to allow SSH logins for both directly to the VMs, these edge nodes, and we'll click on next. As far as where to put these VMs, we'll go ahead and use this vCenter. And on that vCenter, we'll use this cluster called non-NSX hosts. And then we'll go ahead and specify the actual host. There's only one there. This is ESXIC. And for the data store, let's put this on, let's put it on the same data store right there. They're all virtualized anyway, so it won't really matter too much performance wise. If we put one edge node on data store A and the other on data store B, it's not really gonna matter because it's all virtualized. So we'll put the files for this edge two on that same data store and click on next. Then we'll specify we want a static IP address for management and based on our plan, it's 192.168.1.37 with a 24-bit mask and the default gateway is 192.168.1.1. And then as far as which port group to use in association with this management interface on this edge two, let's go ahead and click on select interface. We want this port group right there that goes to my management network. We'll click on save. And then for DNS servers, we'll give a public DNS server of 8.8.8.8. And for time synchronization, we'll also use some public NTP servers. And that'll do it right there. Fantastic. And then we'll click on next. So in step five here, once again, we're going to be taking a look at the transport node configuration. So as far as the transport zone, we want to support both transport zones for this second edge node. The uplink profile, we can use the one we created just a few moments ago which is this one right here, edge uplink VLAN 11, VMNIC 3. And for the assignment of IP addresses, we can go ahead and use the pool once again. And then because we said pool, we'll go ahead and choose which pool to pull from. And then we'll go ahead and specify that we want to use VMNIC 3, which is mapped to this one right here, port group for edges, VMNIC 3, and we'll click on save. All right, and then we'll click on finish. All right, and that is on its way as well as our second edge node. And if we popped over to the vSphere client and looked at running tasks, we can see here that that second edge node is now in the process of being deployed. So again, to deploy the actual edge nodes as VMs, we'd go to system and then on the left, we'd expand fabric, go to nodes. And from here, simply click on add edge node, put in the details, and then let NSX Manager in combination with vCenter deploy those VMs. So I'm gonna give this about a half hour to 45 minutes for these two VMs to be completely deployed and all set up. And then once they are, we can continue by starting to take advantage of the features that these edge transport nodes bring to the table. And that's what we'll continue in the next video. So when you're ready, I'll see you my friend in that next video.